maybe it's time to introduce our third speaker. What do you think, Robin? Yes, please. All right. So I'm going to introduce him. His name is Jesper Tyle Thompson. He is the CEO and co-founder of Soundbox, a startup producing wireless Bluetooth speakers designed for different uses and environments. He has gone from a DIY project with friends to successfully building a lifestyle brand around an innovative product. And today he will talk about the uh, methods of changing startup messaging in times of crisis. And he will share his own experience in how he changed a startup messaging to successfully, successfully reach and impact consumers' needs in times of Corona. Hello, Jasper. Hello, can you hear and see me properly? Yes. Great. Um, I've started early on the cocktail party with the beer. All right. <laughs> um, able to participate later. Um, but of course, I hope that most of you will have a great time there. I will just share my screen here. Yes. Um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Works. Perfect. Um, as Elaine and Robin said, um, my name is Jesper and I am the CEO and co-founder of Soundbox. And today I will be speaking about how to change basically how we changed our startups messaging in a time of crisis and not just crisis, but especially um, Corona. So I can imagine that a lot of you out there don't exactly know what Soundbox is and, and aren't familiar with the brand. To kind of quick give you a, a quick introduction, Soundbox is the world's loudest battery powered speaker. And it's a product that is meant to bring people together and was originally built for festivals. Um, and I don't know if you if you think the same as I do when I see this slide, but as, as you can guess, our product with its origin isn't exactly COVID friendly because usually our marketing looks something like this. It's usually a ton of people, a lot of dancing, a lot of fun, a lot of love, and it's, you know, not exactly COVID friendly, so to say. So as you can maybe imagine, when COVID hit, we were worried because not, not only did we have a product that was kind of built for social experience, we didn't not just we didn't just have a product that where the majority of the sales were for festivals. We didn't just have a product where our entire sort of use case is built around 50 to 100 people being together. We were also ready to launch our big spring campaign. And our big spring campaign this year had the perfect tagline. We were incredibly proud and we felt, OK, we have a solid campaign here. We had produced all the video for it. And we're about to launch it about one week after COVID hit. But unfortunately, the COVID tagline was, uh, sorry, the tagline for the campaign wasn't super COVID friendly because it was, you have to be there. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of a much worse tagline to have during COVID. And I think as soon as COVID hit and we saw the restrictions hitting in, our thought, our faces looked something like this. And we were like, what the hell are we going to do? And the tough parts didn't stop there because on top of that, we were in the very final stages of raising our Series A, a $10 million round. We had term sheets and everything. And then when COVID hit, that completely fell apart. And 
of course, I don't know how you would have felt at that time when your major use case was was had disappeared, when your funding round had disappeared, and when the campaign that you had been working on for three months as well proved to be useless. But I can just tell you how I felt. I thought, fuck. And it was a hard hit. We didn't really know what to do. And 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 many of our investors got super scared. Many of our employees got super scared. And, and, and to be honest, I think um, myself and the rest of the leadership team also got pretty scared because we didn't know what was going to happen. Our product was born out of festivals. Our product was born out of bringing people together. And we had also counted on getting this funding round closed. And suddenly within a few weeks, all of that had disappeared and we didn't know what to do. But our response was quick. And our response was largely due to one amazing competitive advantage that we have at Sandbox, which is our amazing team. Because what we did was that we told our teams one thing, we gave them one clear message. And the message that we gave them was that in a time of crisis, when things get tough, imperfect action beats perfect inaction. And in short, what that really means, because that's a bit of a complicated quote, what that means is that the only mistake is in, is in essence not to move. We didn't want them to freeze. We didn't want them to get scared. We didn't want them to be afraid of making mistakes. We wanted them to try out everything. We wanted them to test things. And we also didn't want them to be afraid of, you know, getting their hands dirty and talking directly to the consumers about the fact that COVID was here. And, you know, our product is maybe built for a completely different situation than COVID. And that the fact that they should just attack that upfront with the consumers. And they move fast because within two weeks, our marketing team built an entire new campaign that completely switched the positioning of our product and completely switched the way that people thought about it during Corona. The first step was that they launched stay home sessions because when Corona hit, we did what we thought was responsible, which was to send out an email to all of our customers saying, you need to stay home. You need to stop partying. A lot of our customers are, are, are teens and, and they're not usually the best at living up to the regulations from the government. Um, so what we told them was stay home, be together, uh, be apart. And then we promised that we will create something fun for you. So we launched stay home sessions, which was stay at home concerts in an order to kind of, let's say, keep the pandemic down when it was growing at its fastest rate. But then we also recognized that we also needed to activate our consumers, both because we know that they're not just going to stay home. They want to get outside and, and, and no matter kind of what the regulations are, they feel that they need to come out and do something. And we also knew that we had to learn how to activate in our, pro our product in a new way. So secondly, we launched the out of the box challenge, which was a challenge on Instagram, where we challenged our consumers to create the most innovative piece of content showing them how they showing us how they use their sandbox in a time where you couldn't be together with a product that is meant to bring people together. And we saw amazing things. We saw customers spending hours and full days teaching themselves how to do video edits so that they could Photoshop themselves three times into a picture like you see on, on the top right corner here. We saw, you know, customers doing full on remixes of DJ sets of them like playing basically sounds on bottles and then remixing that into full techno songs, as you can see on the bottom left corner. And they did amazing stuff. And then thirdly, we launched Redefine Summer. And Redefine Summer was our big new take on the campaign that was supposed to be called You Have to Be There. And the notion that we tried to attack with this campaign was that while many of the things that you might hold, you know, dear, to summer, which can be festivals, which can be uh, the World Cup in football, which can be going to the movies, might not be happening. Then you can still arrange them by yourself if you have a sound box. And we showed it to people in this way. So, yeah.
And as you can see, what we proved to customers was that while the centralized ways of doing all the things that they love to do at summer, whether that is to, you know, to go to the movies outside or to go to a festival might have been canceled, they could arrange them themselves in a decentralized way if they had a sandbox. So we took all the use cases that would be that the sandbox would usually be used at and proved that they could just host them themselves. And we ended up defining ourselves as kind of, you know, the ultimate summer essential to kind of be able to still have the fun that you would usually have in the summer. Because when no one arranges the fun for you, you have to arrange it for yourself. And for that, the sandbox is perfect for. And after we had shown it to them, we knew that we needed to activate our consumers as well. So we launched the Redefine Summer Challenge, which was us asking them to kind of show us how they redefined events that would usually be part of their summer in a COVID-friendly way, whether or not that was skate tournaments, whether or not that was festivals, um, or you know, going hiking with a big group of friends. They proved to us kind of how they activated the sandbox in this new normal. And it was incredible to see because we saw things that we would have never imagined and we saw creativity that spun out of the isolation that was just amazing to see, to be quite honest. And then what we did as well was in our core markets, we backed all of this up with COVID-friendly activations. So in Copenhagen and in Berlin, we launched the flow which was a rave or a party on boats where everyone came with their own group of friends and partied on a boat. So we ended up having 20 boats that follow kind of our raft with, with known DJs that were then playing. And we ended up having a, a party that felt like you might be partying with, with 200 people, but in essence, it was just 20 groups of 10 people that stayed isolated. And, and, and with all of this, we managed to prove to people that in essence, summer isn't canceled. Summer is just redefined. But the one tool that you need to have to redefine summer is the sandbox. And the result of us com completely reestablishing what our product is supposed to be used for was more than 80% sales growth from 2019 to 2020 despite our biggest use case in, 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 form, in the form of festivals getting canceled. And suddenly we took something that many people saw as a massive disadvantage to us and turned it into an advantage, proof that we were the one thing that you would need to get through a crisis like this. And ended up with COVID being actually good for us and, 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 and not bad for us in, in the way that we thought it would be. And often when I do these lectures, I, I, I think to myself sort of what is, what are the biggest learnings that I want to share with this and, and what is it that I actually want, you know, the people who are watching to take with them from this, because it's a ton of information and it's, it's me showing very, very specific slides and very, very specific campaigns that of course are applicable to our business, but might not be applicable to whatever situation that you are out in out there. But the one thing that I think that, that I think that I've learned in, in, in COVID and I hope that you can take with you is the fact that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And that might sound like a strange quote and it's not something, it's not something that I invented. It's a famous quote. And, and what it means is that, in the end, culture is so much more important than strategy because you might be able to create the ultimate go-to-market strategy on how to you know, attack the US and penetrate a new market or something, but then COVID hits or in outside of a pandemic, maybe the ship that your goods are on breaks down or your factory burns down. All of these are, are things that have happened personally to us. And in that situation, your strategy doesn't matter because all of the foundations that it was built on are gone. And I think in a world that is changing faster than ever before and that is more unpredictable than ever before, 
it is more and more likely that the foundations and the pillars that you build your strategy on, the assumptions that you build your strategy on, will have changed completely once you try to put that strategy into effect. And when those changes happen, when the rug gets pulled out from under you and, and your factory burns down or a pandemic hits the world, what you really need there is a strong team and a strong culture. You need a culture and a team where people don't freeze and, and, and pull apart from each other when things get tough. What you need is a culture and a team that pulls closer together and that moves faster than ever before when things get tough. And I think the core reason as to why we in, in Sandbox have managed to get through COVID successfully in, in a business that might seem like it wasn't really built for COVID is not because I am smart and have built a strategy that could take us through COVID. The only reason as to why we've managed to, to successfully change our communication in a time of crisis is because outside in the office that I am sitting in right now, um, there is usually when it's not Corona times, there is a group of amazing people and a, an incredible culture that when things get tough, they don't get scared. Of course they get scared. We all get scared, but they don't freeze. They don't move away from each other. They pull closer together than ever before, prove that they are a true community. And then they fight and they test and they try. And then they fail a ton of times, but eventually they win. And I think that's the number one lesson that I hope that I can kind of bring with you, bring to you from here is that while strategy is important, the number one most important thing is that you have a strong culture and a strong team. And that was what I had to say for today. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Jasper. That was beautiful. You also received some comments from the audience on uh, your presentation that uh, was very nice. And uh, also beautiful uh, videos that you showed us from um, Soundbox. So we don't have any questions yet, but... Uh, oh, yes, we have one. So... Uh, Lisa is asking, how many followers do you have and how was the response on Instagram? How did you motivate people to participate in the challenge? So great question. I think we have 90,000 followers on Instagram. And overall, the, the response was uh, super positive. I think everyone wants to be sort of responsible in, in, in the world that we are in right now. So even when we asked people to stay home and stop partying, the response was positive. But also when we told them, you know, to re redefine their summer and re the sandbox in a new way, the response was very positive. And the way we motivated them was, I think, mostly it's just through the fact that they would get shared on our, on our social channels and kind of, you know, be the winner. So it was just social proof. Um, but in some cases, I think we also picked one winner a month that would win a sandbox. And, and of course, that also motivates people. Of course. We have another question uh, from Jakub. He's, he says, sounds like you guys have an amazing team of people that is super agile and adaptable. Do you make sure to attract the right people? How do you make sure to attract the right people? And who are the right people for a sandbox? So great question. Um, I think... Let's, let's first off start with sort of who are the right people for Soundbox. I think the right people for Soundbox are A, um, the people who of course have the right mentality that want to, you know, fight and, 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 and work. But I think most of all, importantly, it's, it's, it's people who are capable of and want to bring their full self to work and who doesn't leave their emotions at the door. It's someone who is okay with being open, transparent and vulnerable at work. And, and, and someone who really believes in that if we, let me just how to phrase this, if we are vulnerable with each other, if we share everything with each other, then we can come closer together and then we can get stronger together. And someone who always puts the community above the individual, because that is, that is truly what we believe in here. We are first and foremost, a, a, a family and a community and, and very much less so a group of individuals. And I think the way that we that 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 we attract the right talent is is to try to portray the culture that we have internally the most authentically outside. 
Um, so several of our employees have come to us because they've seen either uh, me or also often other people from my team talk about how we do things here at Soundbox or do lectures around Soundbox or talks around Soundbox where we don't talk about the major successes that we've had, but but the major fails that we've had and all of the times that we were close to dying as a company and and, and not just kind of the, the sales that we're making. And I think if you can reflect that honesty and, and, and sort of, let's say that, you know, who you really are both as a person and as a company, then you will per definition attract the people that are right for your company as well. Mm -hmm. Seems like transparency, authenticity is a win situation for companies these days. I believe so, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another question from Anna. She asked, may I ask how it went with the funding round you were in? Um, it completely fell apart like two times. Um, and then I think three months later, we ended up raising a much smaller round. We ended up raising $4 million in, in instead of $10 million, uh, which was, of course, un, un, unfortunate. Um, but yeah, in the end, that is how the world is sometimes. <laughs> and uh, Lisa is asking, is that going to be a permanent new marketing direction or just an adaptation during Corona? Will you have to be there campaigning? Uh, yeah, will the you have to be there campaigning be back after COVID? So I think I think probably a mix. I think you know when when festivals hopefully reopen, we will of course you know market against festivals and show kind of how amazing the soundbox is at festivals and when you are you know fifty to two hundred and fifty people. But I also think that there are you know maybe nightclubs as we know them are never coming back at least not as many as they were before. And I think kind of this of showing that the soundbox is in many cases, the essential that you need to have to kind of create the night that you want is, is definitely sort of a marketing tool that we'll take with us. Mm -hmm. so, well, I mean, okay. Um, I have maybe, a sorry, yeah. can, I, can I ask a question? Because I, I was wondering, I mean, you were saying that this community is so important, like, but I think it's not just the community inside the company, but also outside, right? With all the Absolutely. customers, with all the people out there. So can you maybe give some concrete examples of how you strengthen this, um, this sure. community with the customers by concrete actions? Yeah. Um, so I think in general, sort of our approach to community is that the way that, 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 that you establish is, it is by minimizing the distance between kind of the company and, and, and the customers or the community of customers. And, and there's many ways to do that. I think one of the ways we've done that is that we've said that our, our, our office is always open to customers. And if there's something wrong with their speaker, they can always just come in and hand it in here. And that's led to multiple times that, you know, um, we've had people come in and apply for jobs when they've seen kind of handed in their speaker that there was maybe broken, but then they saw the vibe at the office and they were like, I want to work here. So they applied. We have two people working here right now, I think, where that happened. Um, then secondly, as well, it's also led to sometimes that just customers have enjoyed the vibe at the office. And we've had like multiple customers that have like come in here many times just to hang out. Um, we had a guy who came in, here, I think, two hours every week for six months just to come in and say hi and, and have a beer and a coffee with us. And then he would just walk around and talk to people. And then I think secondly as well, we have these like Facebook groups, Summer Community Denmark, Summer Community Deutschland, Summer Community Norway, um, where customers engage with each other. And many of us, in, including myself, engage with our own personal Facebook profile in there as well. And, and, you know, talk to the customers in there and offer customer support. And I think that's also another way of kind of, yeah, let's say, eliminating the distance between us and the customers. And that's really what makes them feel as part of something. Sounds like you really built a lifestyle around your brand and you were very good at doing that because uh, many people became attracted to your company, which represents a, a lifestyle as well. So my question is how much, uh, well, do you think that to build a lifestyle brand that lifestyle as to reflect uh, your own as well and the one of people working there? I think to an extent, yes. But, but there's an interesting sort of case, which is that many people think that 
Sandbox is like a crazy party company and all of the people that work here are just, you know, the people dancing at the table. Um, but in many cases, I think sort of what the lifestyle that we are trying to portray is, 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 is one where we empower everyone and anyone to kind of create and become the life of the party. And, and, and sort of our thesis around that is that is that you can only be the life of the party if you are sort of truly confident and relaxed in who you are. And in many cases, I think sort of that is the lifestyle that we try to represent is kind of that through the power of music is that you can, you know, you can relax and, 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 and be who you're meant to be. And I think that is the lifestyle that we try to live in Soundbox as well. Not necessarily one of, of crazy parties. Of course, we also have that, but mostly one of where you can be your whole self, both at, at home and personally, of course, but especially at work, because that's where we engage mostly with our teammates. Okay, I have another question. Uh, yeah. Is there something that uh, you learned from this experience of Corona and having to change your brand messaging uh, about your company? Something new that you did not expect? Mm, oh, absolutely. I think there's many things, right? Um, let me just try to pick one. Um, I think in general, sort of, seeing how powerful music in general is. So one of our employees has um, lives in like an apartment complex where all of them have like, uh, you know, patios or small like, you know, terraces where they can stand outside. And she for like the full three months that we had a lockdown in Denmark, every day at seven, she put out her soundbox outside and played music. And then all of her neighbors, you know, so like a hundred people came out as well and danced and requested songs. And then she would first start, start with like 30 minutes on one side. And then she would go to the other side of her apartment where there was also other apartments, put it out there and play music and people could request songs again. And it became this massive thing that really sort of brought their community together. And, you know, people sent, sent her videos of their, you know, two-year-old kids dancing and, it just it became something that I think definitely proved that the soundbox and 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 loud music is isn't just something for partying, but it's also really something that can actually bring people together in a time of crisis, where we might feel further apart than ever. Then then music is something that can pull us together. Nice. I don't know if you, Robin, have any other questions. I think that's great. I think it was really inspiring, especially as I have heard another speech of Jasper before. And I think it was uh, interesting to see the, the Twitch also now uh, focusing on the communication mainly and that aspect. Uh, I think it's a really cool company. And I mean, walking around in Copenhagen, you really see it everywhere, um, which, which I think is really great to achieve as a brand. Thanks so um, much. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having Jasper. me. It was Thank a pleasure you. to speak and I hope everyone enjoyed it. And yeah, if people have any more questions to Jasper, you can see on the Really Good Innovation Summit page, also his LinkedIn. Um, Feel free to connect. Perfect. Thank you, Jasper. Thank you so much.